Hello. In this lesson, we're going to start creating and editing the curves for our shampoo bottle. We've already placed our picture frame images, and we have those on a layer named Images that we can switch on and off. The first views we'll develop is our right view here. So we'll go into the right view. So we have a side view of our shampoo bottle here. We're going to go ahead and draw our detail curves. You notice we have a separate top, but we're going to go ahead and create the curves that make the side of this, and that'll include the top. We'll cut the top off as a later step. We also have this slightly indented area, which is fairly common on a lot of plastic form bottles, and we will draw the curves for that in this chapter. So I have the images layer set so that it's locked, so I can't accidentally select anything. So we're just going to go up, and using our control point curve line, we're just going to rough in basic curve for this object. And we're going to extend beyond just a little bit. Once I have that drawn, I'll switch Gumball off here. I'm going to hit F10 to switch my control points on. And I'll move those control points around until I get the look that I want here. So I can zoom in. Now, if you have your object snaps on and you're finding that they're snapping to too many things and they're kind of over controlling your drawing, what you can do is as you're dragging around, if you hold down the Alt key, that will temporarily switch off your object snaps. As soon as I let go of the Alt key again, you can see it goes back on. But that's kind of nice. It allows you to have those object snaps still be on, but yet not overpowering everything you're doing. Let's just bring that in just a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit Escape twice to switch off my control points. Now I'm going to draw the spine of this object. Again, I'll hit the control point curve. And I think since my image is cropped pretty close here, I'll just let my object snap to the very end here, and then I'll kind of draw up from there. So I'll drag up. You know, notice using the control point curve, you got to click off a little bit to place a control point, and then come back and place that point. And as always, we're going to have to drag the control points around, so I'll select this curve, hit F10. And then I can move the point around until it get that just where I want that. It can be a little hard to see that yellow against this white background, so just kind of look for that. It looks like I want to move this in just a little bit, and I'm going to pull that off of the surface. Just about there. And let's tweak that, and we'll bring that up about there-ish. So I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'll hit Escape twice to switch control points off. We have our two main curves drawn in the side view. Let's go to our front view now. And I'm going to draw a curve for the outline edge here. So it looks like this kind of comes back in on itself just a little bit. So I'll click here. Now we have this cut in, so we have to sort of imagine where this surface would go. And I'll try clicking there to start with, and we can adjust as needed. And by the time it gets up here, if you were to follow that line out there, it's probably somewhere around there. Seems about right. Let me hit F10 to turn on my control points. It looks like I'll have to drag this point up just a little higher to get the right curvature there. And we'll go even just a little higher just to get that to kind of round up here. And then I'll bring this back over just a touch. Bring that back there. And that looks pretty good. So as I said when we were placing the picture frames, we really wanted this view to be centered about the zero, zero point, because in this view the object is symmetrical. And since we did place the middle of this picture framed image at our zero, zero world coordinates, we can now take this curve, and from the side toolbar menu, we'll select Mirror, and we'll type the number zero, hold down Shift and drag up, you can see we've now got a nice symmetrical view of this object. As I was drawing these curves, I wasn't looking in any other views. And if we go to the front view, you can see these curves, while they curve in this direction, they look like they're flat, or just laying in two dimensions. 
If I go to perspective, you can see they're actually kind of bent in the 3D world here. So we can select those two curves. And what we're going to do is go to transform, set points. We want them to line up in the Y direction. So along this axis here, we want them all to be in a nice straight line. So we'll switch off set Z and set X. And we'll hit OK. And in our top viewport, I'm going to drag until we're about somewhere in there. And that's going to be sort of the highest point of the arc of this ellipse. So now you can see the curves are laying nice and flat in the Y direction. Now I have these four curves. I'll go ahead and trim them to the heights I need them. So I make my right viewport active, and I'll go up under Surface to Plane, and choose Cutting Plane. And on this I can just use my snaps. So we have one there, and there, and I'll snap there, and drag out and holding Shift, and click there. So now we have those four curves, and I have these caps on the top and bottom. Let me go ahead and switch that to Shaded View, so you can see those a little better. And I'll switch the grid off, F7. So with those four curves selected, I'll just press Split, and click on these two surfaces. And you can see the command line tells me that four curves have been split into 12 pieces. I'll hold down my Control, and I'll drag a box on the middle section. That deselects the middle curves, and it keeps the curves that are above and below the cutting plane selected. So I can now just hit Delete and get rid of all of those. And I'm just going to go ahead and hide these two planes. You never know when you might need them for reference. So I'll just click Hide Objects on my middle mouse pop-up. So those four curves are all now cut at the same height at the top and at the bottom. Let's go back into our right viewport. And I want to add a curve that's going to represent my cut line here. And this curve can be a little extended. Doesn't matter, we're going to use that later on just to place our cutting plane. And now I'll go ahead and draw the curves for this guy here. And this is actually going to be made up of individual curves that I'll join together later. So we have that curve. And we'll adjust that just a little bit. That looks pretty good. I have the curve that comes across it. Something like that. And that curve goes there for the lower portion of it. We'll go ahead and put a fillet on these. So I'll click my fillet curve command. And let's try a fillet of 8 millimeters and see if that works for us. So I'll type the number 8 and hit Enter. Click on the inside of the curves. That looks a little small, so let me undo that. Press the spacebar to reapply that command. And let's try a 12 on that. And that looks a lot better. And see if we can use the same one at the top. That might be a little big at the top. Let me hit spacebar again. Type 10 and enter. And that looks pretty good. Now the next curve I'm going to draw is actually going to define the edge of this surface. And there's no real good indication of where that is. So I'm just going to eyeball something that kind of makes sense to me. So I want to kind of mimic the little bit of a curve that that front edge has. And I'm going to overdraw my curves. And we'll go ahead and we'll click on the Trim option. And I want to join these back curves here. So I select them, click Middle Mouse, and then Join. Let me switch off images just to have a look what we have. So if I go into my Perspective window, I have my two front view curves that will define the shape of that front view. I have the front curve and the back spine curve. This horizontal curve that represents where my cap is going to be cut. And those two curves are going to represent the cutout area for the offset window that we're going to go ahead and carve into this model. So that's about all the curves we need to set up to go ahead and start building this bottle now. So that concludes this lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll start building the main body surfaces.